Hi, and welcome to part 11 of the You Can Be Anything podcast skill series. I am your host, Solange Che, and thank you for joining me today. Part 11 means that we are 11 weeks into this. That is close to three months of doing this. If you have been with me on this journey, it means you're almost clocking three months of learning a new skill. Last week, I encouraged you to make sure that as you are learning, you don't bite more than you can chew. I encourage you to pick a particular path in whatever skill you're learning, whatever walk of life you're in, and get it, get through with it so that you can get a job. And while on the job, you can continue to upskill because again, why are we doing this? We want to be able to get better jobs that will improve our standard of living, correct? So today, drifting a little bit away from that I'm here to talk to you about what you can start doing considering that you're learning a new skill and you are already in the third month that means that you are getting ready for the job market that means that you have guts and you have grasped a subject matter of what you're doing and it is time for you to get your hands dirty if you remember in, part th in episode 33 of my podcast, my regular You Can Be Anything podcast, in which I spoke with Faiwo Kitaf, Samoa Shang, I asked him on that podcast what he is doing, what his team is doing with the Cloud Heroes Africa. These are a group of young people who have decided to come together and learn AWS Cloud. I asked him how he was handling that and how he was preparing them to be able to jump into the job market once they were done. And he told us and with, with great emphasis that they are doing hands-on exercises. These hand, hands-on exercises are super important as you prepare to get into the workforce. Yes, you have made the decision, you have learned the skill, you have taken examinations, whether you passed or you failed, it is time for you to start getting your hands dirty. If you did not make it, just dust it off, try again. And as I always say, as I said in the part in which we talked about failure on this skill series, I reminded you that failure is an opportunity for you to get better. But once you're clocking the three months into this, I want you to be able to find those hands-on exercises that will prepare you for the job market. I'm happy that Cloud Heroes Africa is doing this with all the students that have decided to learn AWS through that platform. And for you who is learning on your own, it's time for you to get your hands dirty. It's time for you to look for those opportunities to do exercises that simulate real world business problems that you'll be solving once you get a job. There are different ways for you to do this. You can find such exercises on YouTube. You can even go on Udemy. I think that there are some courses on Udemy, depending on what you're studying, where you can actually look for hands-on exercises, or maybe there are courses that actually solve real-life problems through hands-on guidance. You want to be able to gear your energy towards that now, because yes, you're getting ready for the job market. So I just want you to know that in as much as it is important for us to decide on what we want to study, get the certifications, we don't just want to get out of there and jump into the job market. You want to be able to practice. Practice is very, very important. And as I always say, I like to bring in my own experiences because that is what drives this whole podcast skill series. For those of you who know me, I am a Salesforce consultant, which, which, which means that, yes, I thought myself Salesforce for the most part, right, from a linguist to a Salesforce consultant. So I took time to learn Salesforce. Now I'm telling you in your third month to start getting hands on. I started getting hands on when I was learning Salesforce after about a year of learning Salesforce on my own. That was too much time I wasted, and that is why these are some of the things that make me want to do this because I want you to, to learn from my mistakes, right? To correct my mistakes by helping you, sharing this information with you. I learned Salesforce on my own on Trailhead. I did that, I was able to do some Udemy courses and to do a bootcamp which gave me enough information, enough knowledge I needed to take my first Salesforce certification. Yes, I made it. I passed the first Salesforce certification, but was I ready 
to actually get out there and get into the job market and be a Salesforce admin, an awesome admin. I wasn't ready. Fortunately for me, for those of you who downplay the importance of mentors in your life, please do not. Fortunately for me, I was assigned a mentor by Salesforce and this man helped me so much. I was able to reach out to him and talk to him how I felt, tell him how I felt, tell him how nervous I was to even look for a job, even though at that time I already had two Salesforce certifications. I explained to him how nervous I was, how I didn't feel like I could do this. And what was his advice? To get hands-on experience. I was able to volunteer for a short time at one of the universities in Fresno, but also that did not really help a lot because there was a main admin that was also trying to learn, so I didn't get to get my hands so dirty on there. But at the same time, talking to my mentor at that time, he encouraged me to do what Trailhead calls the Trailhead Super Badges. The Super Badges are real, I'll call them real life a simulation of real life business problems that Trailhead has put together to help guide you on each path that you're taking within the Salesforce ecosystem. Truth be told, they are not easy. It took me days, sometimes weeks, to go through those super badges. Today I have eight of them. And I wouldn't lie to you, going through those super badges, being able to read, to pull out my requirements from the, from the from whatever Salesforce provides, pull the requirements, being able to design a solution, find the problems, find what the pain points are, being able to design a solution that takes care of those pain points and execute, I wouldn't lie to you, was super helpful to me. So if you're on a Salesforce journey, if you're listening to this and you're on a Salesforce journey, you want to take a look at the super badges on Trailhead. They are very helpful. If you're on another journey, if you're on another path, not in the tech world or not AWS or Salesforce or SQL or data science, whichever one you're doing, because for most of this tech, tech career path, you will find these hands-on exercises, even on Udemy, even on YouTube, that people will come with, will come up with courses that are actually real life, real problems. So they're simulating real problems and teaching you how to solve them. You want to be able to go through those kinds of courses when you have gotten to this level of learning. If you're not in the tech world and you're doing something else, I say, for example, you're, learn, you're learning, you're upskilling to become a coach or a personal trainer, whichever. You want to be able to offer your services to friends and family. You want to be able to have fake clients because it is by having those people as your clients and requesting feedback from them that you'll be able to say, yes, I am ready for the real client world. You want to be able to handle those situations. Offer your services for free. If you want to become a personal trainer, as I spoke with Azi Ayafo last week, and he was talking, get somebody, train somebody for free. See how it feels like to have a client. Offer free services. Prepare yourself for the market. Because the truth is, if you just finish learning and you feel like you're good enough, you have the certifications and it's time for you to jump into the market and you get in there, you might just hate what you're doing. It will not be because that's not what you wanted to do, but because you were thrown into the market unprepared. So this is an opportunity. I want you to start preparing now. And when I say now, I'm saying now in regards to almost getting to three months since I started this podcast skill series. So for you, I want you, if you are not following my same timeline, by the time you get into the third month of learning any new skill, if you can do it earlier, that's good. But do not go beyond your three months of learning without getting your hands dirty, without, without actually going out there and looking for real life problems to solve the kind of things you'll be doing when you get a job. It is super important. So as you get on this journey, remember, it is not an easy one. Nobody promised us that it was going to be an easy one. But while on it, remember to ask for help. Remember to ask questions. There is somebody out there who is already doing what you're doing. There is somebody out there that knows better than you. Ask those questions. Seek help. It will help you. It's going to push you forward. It's going to make you realize that we succeed by helping each other. 
when somebody helps you, you're going to feel that need to help another person. And that is just how the chain reaction goes. So please, if you're getting on month three, you're completing month three of learning your new skill, it is time for you to get your hands dirty. Offer free services. Look for hands-on courses and get them done. You will be challenged, but remember that that is what you're preparing yourself for in the real life, in the real world. I hope you find some value in this. I hope that you're able to go past this and at the same time, because you're at this level, all what, you, all what I'm talking about now, these are things that are going to help you boost your resume. These are things that are going to help you boost your experience when you talk to interviewers. These are things that when you talk about, when you solve such problems, you'll be able to talk to them during interviews and it just prepares the path for you as you go forward. I hope you find some value in this again and that you share this with anyone you know that is on this journey of finding their best versions. Until next week, be good to each other. Bye-bye.